Hey guys, this is Glenn from GMP Custom Fabrications. On today's video, I'm going to be replacing the original starter on Rat Dooley with the cheapest high torque that they sell on eBay. Okay guys, uh, a problem that seems pretty common with these big motors, these 460s, is they take a lot to crank them over, especially after they're warmed up. I have done everything on this truck, up to and including a new battery. All my grounds are good, solenoid's good, everything's good, and yet when it gets hot, it is hard to crank over. And it just about left me stranded this weekend. Uh, I was headed to a car show, it was running hot, we pulled off to get some gas and uh, I went to start back up and it just it wouldn't crank it. it. It cranked about three times and then it just wasn't having no more of it. These original starters, they're you know ancient technology. I guess they're they're big brutes. They require a lot of amperage. The smaller high torque replacements, uh, they, they've got a gear reduction set up in them so they don't require as much amperage to turn them. This one, the cheapest one they, I could find on eBay, it was about, I want to say 90, between 90 and 100 dollars. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and, and post a picture of it over here, the uh, eBay ad. Uh, I don't remember, I actually ordered it and got it in a couple months ago. And because the truck had been running so good and not getting hot, uh, I started questioning whether or not I was gonna need it. Uh, I'd been doing several tri chore trips around town and wasn't having any trouble with it getting too hot. So Sunday when we were headed to car show, it was the first time I had on the interstate for long periods of time. And I tried running with traffic for a bit, running 70 miles an hour. And the temperature started creeping up on me. So I slowed down to 60, 65. And it still went around between 210 and 220. Uh, and so I went ahead, after driving about 30 miles, I stopped to get gas. To, I stopped because I wasn't sure how accurate my gas gauge was yet. So when I stopped and got gas, I went to start it back up again. And uh, it had cooled off some, but the fan keeps running until it gets down to a certain temperature. So that does drain the battery quite a bit, and I, I realize that. But whenever my starter engages, my fan shuts off. And uh, even at, in that state, there wasn't no crank left to it. Uh, well, I shouldn't say none. I, I should have shot video so you could see exactly what it was doing. But I know for a fact that all my connections are good. Uh, I've been through all of it, new cables, new ends, new battery, everything. And uh, it, it just, I'll go show you an example. This isn't the actual starter that's on it, you know, of course right now. This is one that had been on it and uh, then I replaced it with another one just like it which is what's on there now. And as you can see, with it being cold, it fires right up. So uh, I kind of give you an indication of what it sounds like right now. I'll go ahead and do that again. Another quick startup, get on video so we can compare them after I get it changed. So as you can see, when it's cold, it starts just fine. Uh, I don't have any problems with it. The problems come when it gets hot. And that's not uncommon with these motors. Uh, it's just so much mass to it. I've, I've gone as far as wrapping the starter in heat wrap, trying to keep it from getting heat soaked. And that didn't seem to really help. And, and I kind of questioned that whenever I did it, whether it was gonna actually hold more heat in other than, you know, rather than protect it from the outside. I don't know, I, I seem to have the problems with it either way. 
So, that being said, I'm going to stop the video, switch them out. Uh, there's no point in me dragging you under the car to do that. Uh, I'm going to have to air up the truck, uh, get the jacks underneath it, I'll go through that whole rigmarole, and uh, maybe I'll do a high speed on that so you can fully appreciate what all I have to do to actually get this thing up off the ground. Just airing it up with shop air at first, and shop air only gets so far, so I went ahead and fired it up to get a little bit more air to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the front end up a little bit higher, get the uh, get the floor jack underneath it better. Anytime I'm going to have the front end up, I go ahead and put the ramps underneath it uh, as a safety precaution to help keep the truck up and uh, and to keep the wheels from sitting there hanging out in space. So that's that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath there, swap them starters out, and uh, then I'll be right back with you. Before I swap those starters out, I'm gonna show you real quick the, the key differences in them. First off, it's not weight-wise, yeah, uh, I, I haven't weighed them. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of difference. I wouldn't say it's, it's really significant. Uh, you know, it might be different between you know 10 and 10 pounds and 15 pounds. I wouldn't say it's twice as heavy. You know, maybe 10 and 20. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to look them numbers up and see. I'll go ahead and post those over here, right here. Let you know what the weights are. Uh, one thing that I seen on this one right away is whereas the Ford just has the swap for the cable, one cable goes to it from the solenoid. The new one has the uh, cable, I believe, would come from the battery, and then like a GM starter, it has the uh, starter for the starter solenoid, where the power will go there. The way I'm going to run this is I will run the battery to here, as it's made for, but I'm going to keep my Ford solenoid in place, and I'm going to run a, a wire off of the starter solenoid to solenoid wire and and my reason for doing that is the way I have things wired to my starter solenoid right now I'd have to redo a bunch of it because I have things that like whenever the starter solenoid is engaged it uh, kicks off my fans plus it's got current going to other things that have to be going when the starter solenoids engaged and I don't want to have to move all that stuff down to this here. And I just think it'll be a, a cleaner, uh, more, more current for the uh, starter solenoid. So uh, let's get started. Okay, another quick uh, comparison between the uh, original starter and the uh, new replacement. For one thing, uh, one reason why I did go with this one, uh, well, of course, because it was cheap but I'm a, a strong believer that there was several identical starters like this. Uh, some of them costing two and three times as much that had people's brand names on them. Uh, I, I've worked in factories before <laughs> where we were making the exact same part for different customers and their price differences were different and I knew the materials going into them were exactly the same. So that being said, uh, there's a part of me that truly believes that this $90 starter is the exact same starter that other people are selling for $250. I may be wrong about that. Only time will tell. Uh, that being said, this comparison will be at somewhat of a disadvantage because although it will, I do plan on testing it, getting it hot and, and see how it turns over. This isn't a daily driver. I don't drive this truck every day. Whether or not this starter would hold up to everyday use, 
I, I won't be able to tell you that. Uh, I will be able to tell you what it does for me well, when the truck's hot, but I can't, I can't speak for, you know, everyday use. I, I wish I could. I wish I was driving the truck every day, uh, but gas prices being what they are and fuel economy being what it is, uh, that's not going to happen. So anyway, uh, I, I noticed right away too, the uh, flanges, you can see the thickness difference between the two of them. And this is the starter I just pulled off. As you can see, I got wrapped up with a heat tape. Whether or not it made any difference, I don't know. But you can see the thickness of the flange between the two of them. Yeah, that, that's pretty beefy. And, and you do notice that the way the overall, the nose of it's made. Whereas this one's flat, it doesn't have the nose cone to it, and the original one does. Uh, I would say that's just all in the mechanism, how it you know works in here, uh, that it puts out enough, that it sticks out far enough to do the job. Whereas this one, it's uh, up to the, the gear to slide out on that shaft, and that could be some resistance there. Setting them side by side uh, to the one that had come off the 460 and the one that came off the 400, they're identical. Same length, same diameter. So now let's get this little one on there and uh, see how it does. Okay, so what I ended up making is a wire that will be going from the uh, starter solenoid, the Ford solenoid, down to the connector on the starter. Understand, I, I don't believe that kind of current would be necessary to actually go through a starter. This seems to make the most sense to me. So I will be going cable that was going from the starter solenoid down to the starter i'll be putting it on top of positive terminal on the solenoid and then i'll be putting this in its place on the starter solenoid down to the starter okay i've got it in uh I have a new starter in no problems with it uh i did have to get a nut and bolt for the, the top side of it because the original uh one of the one of the mounting holes on the original was threaded uh, and on the replacement, they were both smooth, so I had to go ahead and get a uh, nut and bolt for uh, act as the top one. Uh, and I noticed as I was mounting it, whereas on the original, when mounted, the uh, it sits something like this, has a, a starter mechanism up to the top. The solenoid on that actually sits out to the side. That may be an issue with with some headers because uh, it does you know get closer to the frame so that might be an issue somebody might run into uh, running those starters is that the solenoid gets in the way uh, I really can't say because of its smaller diameter so just how much more it's sticking out I really can't say I didn't think to measure from the frame to the uh, outside of this before I took it off yeah. right there you can see the solenoid and the uh, distance to the frame so if you had headers that may may be an issue so uh, let's go ahead and see how it sounds this video that you're not gonna see uh, that was, so forget I even said that okay so anyway what uh, I ended up doing for anybody who is interested in getting one of these starters and want to know uh, the best way to hook it up uh, this is the way I believe is the best way to do it it gives you uh, it allows your your Ford solenoid to do what it was made to do uh, which has an ignition side to it, which goes back and, and tells, you know, your computer or whatever else. Uh, it gives it a signal when it's supposed to, and it will continue to do that. Uh, also, uh, it gives a good hard 12 volts on that side down to the starter, uh, which is already uh, on, you know, on the on the solenoid side. It gets a good 12 volts going to it 
So uh, this will be a first test of the new starter with it at temperature. And as you can see, it didn't have any problems starting it. I uh, really like the way it sounded. It definitely didn't sound like it was straining at all. Uh, on granite, this is with it. Temperature is actually about 180 uh, right now. I'm going to be running the truck over the next couple days uh, down the interstate and back. Uh, try to get it really good and hot. All right, I'm going to shoot a quick video with my phone. I just took Rat Dooley to town and uh, I got it up to 210 degrees. As you can see there. And uh, now I'm going to see how it starts with the uh, new starter. Did a hot test with Rat Dooley, uh, 210 degrees on the uh, temperature gauge, and it fired right up. We'll do it one more time. <laughs> Love it. Sounds awesome. So, okay. okay, I uh, just uh, went into Lowe's. Spent about 20 minutes in there. The fans have been running the whole time since I've been. Uh, inside trying to cool the motor down uh, so now we will see uh, how it starts okay just to recap I am very happy with this purchase for being the cheapest high torque gear reduction mini starter for a small block Ford on eBay that I could find I am very happy with this purchase. Installation went good, seems to be working fine, and I definitely give it a thumbs up. So, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. Subscribe, like, dislike, comment. If you got any questions at all, I'm usually pretty quick to, uh, to respond, but uh, that does it for today. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up. This is Glenn for GMP Custom Fabrications, living the dream till the freaking phone rings. Thanks for watching. Of course, what would have been handy uh, just now is if I had went ahead and installed the disconnect I have to disconnect the battery, uh, but I haven't gotten around to it yet, so, <laughs> so uh, hopefully soon.